the child's curiosity book, embellished with cuts. Frontispiece The nicest puddings, tarts, and pies shall be those children's fare, who's curious to be good and wise, and make their book their care. The Child's Curiosity Book The Robin Redbreast The Robin Redbreast is a very pretty and social bird, and particularly fond of mankind. See, here he is. Pretty creature, he will come into our houses and pick up whatever he can find. And it will be wrong to put him into a cage, as he makes himself so good a company, without such confinement. The little robin redbreast covered the dead children in the wood, and everybody ought to love them. Yet there was a naughty boy once who tried to catch a poor robin as he was hopping about picking up the crumbs. The bird escaped and got upon a rail, but the boy, in pursuing him, fell down and hurt himself so much that he kept his bed for a fortnight, a just punishment for his want of hospitality. The nursery. There is nothing more tender than the love of a mother to her child. Here is the nursery. Do but observe with what care the fond parent tends her child, though it often cries and is peevish. Whatever be the troubles it gives, parental love shall never cease, but always will remain. How many sports are fraught for to divert the mother's darling? You were such a little creature in arms once, and no doubt you were nursed with care. Therefore you ought to make amends for it by being good and dutiful, for those who are otherwise come to no good. An example which you will find in the next page. Story of Sally Sulky Sally was a little girl of whom her parents were too fond, and even her nurse, when she was in arms, let her have all she cried for, and so she cried for almost everything. Thus she was early spoiled, chiefly because she was pretty. As she grew up, she proved more and more obstinate. She behaved sullen and would pout for hours, nay, sometimes for a whole day, about some trifle, while not anybody could tell what was the matter. In short, she grew so very naughty that her parents were obliged often to correct her severely. She was only more sullen for it. At last, she was so wicked to run away from her father and mother. But in going through a meadow, she was pursued by a mischievous bull, and though she escaped from him and got home again, yet she was so much frightened that she was subject to fits ever after. The Good Children's Feast There were a number of children who were all schoolfellows, got together to play. When the squire of the parish, coming that way, gave them some money for fruit and cakes, and desired they would divide what they brought with all their companions. Now Master and Miss Fairchild, who belonged to the party, happening then to be absent, these greedy children would not share what they had got with them when they returned. While they were complaining how hard it was, the squire, happening again to come by, reproved them for their behavior, and said he would report them to their schoolmaster. But he invited Master Fairchild and his sister to his own house, where he seated them with puddings, pies, and all sorts of niceties. But not one of the greedy children was admitted. The careless children. Exercise is good for health, and therefore sports which keeps the limbs in motion are proper for children, but they should be careful to use such as are safe. Charlie Careless and Suki Hairbrain suffered for want of minding this maxim. They were fond of swinging on a rope, and their parents thought the exercise did them good, but having once neglected to fasten it properly, down they came and were much hurt and still more frightened. This was very heedless, and as pretty as the sport had seemed, it hindered them from using it for the future. Learn to be wise from others' harm, and you shall do full well. The Pretty Sport Tommy Truby was a good, insensible boy 
who never played the truant, nor kept company with naughty children. He did not like tossing up, nor chuck farthing, because he thought it might lead him to love gaming when he was grown up. The Pretty Sport Tommy Truby was a good and sensible boy who never played the truant nor kept company with naughty children. He did not like tossing up nor chuck farthing because he thought it might lead him to love gaming when he was grown up. But he liked very well to play at ball and top and more particularly at marbles, at which he was very clever, never cheated and played so well that he used to teach the neighboring children. And here you see him instructing Master Manly, a baronet's son, in the place, as he did in matters of more consequence, and behaved so well toward him that he was his friend all his lifetime. Fireworks and Crackers Fireworks are things that look very pretty when they are properly managed by those who understand them. But children ought to take care how they meddle with gunpowder, left by should they hurt themselves or other people. Tom Hazard, for example, was always fond of playing with serpents, crackers, and etc. At one time, he was near doing damage by his fireworks falling into a cellar, and at another, as you see in the cut, he so much frightened one of his schoolfellows that the he fell down and put his ankle out, for which Tom was severely corrected and you must own he richly deserved it. Sports of Harlequin When children are good and dutiful, their parents sometimes indulge them by taking them to see plays or shows. Among these, there are few so diverting as the humorous of Harlequin and the Clown, the one diverting you with his wonderful leaps and changes and skipping about as the other does with his odd blunders and grimaces, so that nobody can help laughing at them. Here they are both, in as pretty a pair as you could wish. If you behave well, no doubt, but you will see them often, if you are not already acquainted with them. In the meantime, I hope you have been pleased with the Curiosity Book, which was designed as a pretty plaything on purpose for you. And never shall you want delight, if mirth with wisdom you unite. The End The End